Hello everyone and welcome to this video series on hand calculations. Today we are going to be discussing the off-axis ratio. So let's start with the definition of the off-axis ratio. So this is the definition listed here. You can see it's a function of the depth and the off-axis distance x and it's just a ratio of doses. One of the doses is taken at depth d and off-axis distance x and it's normalized to the dose at depth d at an off-axis distance of zero or the central axis and this is the geometry on the right uh, kind of that we're dealing with here so you can see those two points that i mentioned before and then you're always measuring at a depth d and off-axis distance x so to get the off-axis ratio for this point you would just measure the dose at depth d off-axis distance x and then measure the dose along the central axis at the same depth and just take the ratio of the two and that's how the off-axis ratio is defined. So it's always relative to the central axis dose. A couple things to note about the off-axis ratio is that they're symmetric. So it doesn't really matter what direction you move. You could go right or left, forward, back. You could even go diagonally. Uh, but the off-axis ratio is always symmetric. And so it doesn't matter what direction you're moving from the central axis. Your off-axis ratio is always going to be the same. And also notice the depth dependence of the OAR, and that really comes from the flattening filter. And I draw a little diagram on the right here of the flattening filter. Please excuse my poor drawing skills. Um, but what you can see is that near the center of the beam, the flattening filter is thicker. And because of that, photons near, in the center of the beam pass through more material and they're attenuated more. And the lower energy photons are preferentially attenuated, leaving you with more higher energy photons near the center. So you get a beam hardening effect and a beam softening effect as you move towards the periphery. And that's where the depth dependence comes from and also where the beam horns come from. So we're going to look at some profiles in a little bit, but it's important to note that you need to account for the spectral differences across the beam because of the flattening filter. So here's some example profiles. We have five different profiles here at five different depths. We have 1.5, 5, 10, 20, and 30. This is for a 6x beam. Uh, and you can very clearly see the presence of beam horns at those shallower depths. But as you move down uh, or deeper in the phantom, those uh, beam horns actually tend to disappear. And notice the y-axis of these plots here. It's the ratio to the central axis value. So this plot is directly giving you the off-axis ratio. So all you would need to do to get an off-axis ratio from this profile is find your off-axis distance, uh, go up and find the curve with the correct depth, and wherever um, your off-axis distance intersects the curve, uh, that would be your off-axis ratio. And that is going to be it for off-axis ratios, so I will see you in the next video.